What's going on? My name is Mike. Today, I'm going to use ChatGPT to teach myself a new programming language. Now, I've known about Rust for many years, but I've never taken the time to fully dive in. Rust has always been a bit intimidating to me because it's strongly typed language. The languages that I really enjoy tend to be more on, on the web development side, and, and I'm fairly proficient with those. I'm really looking forward to learning a new language, and I've used Chat GPT, more specifically GPT-3 and OpenAI, to, to learn Golang in the past. And I thought learning a new language with GPT-3 was incredibly easy. It was like having my own programmer buddy where I could just look over and ask a question to. So I'm a little nervous to do this because I literally have no experience and I know it's gonna to be tough. You're gonna to see me fumble a bit but it's gonna be fun. So hopefully you can you can support me, cheer me on as I go, and uh, and hopefully you can learn something as well. What I hope that, that this video can teach anyone is that AI doesn't know everything, uh, and instead it can supplement the questions that we have. So as you become a better developer and, and a better engineer, you'll start thinking the way that you think as a developer you can start to query or pick ai's brain to teach you how to do things in another language that's how i did it with golang and that's how i plan on doing it again with rust this is going to be a lot of fun we're going to give it a shot so let's go in case you've lived under a rock for the last couple of weeks chat gpt is based off of OpenAI's gpt3 model GPT-3 is an AI model that will convert natural language to anything from art, to copy, to programming, or to code. Chat, what makes ChatGPT unique is that it's very conversational. So I can start the conversation, and as ChatGPT answers and continues to answer, anything that we've talked about can be used and pulled from, keeping the conversation alive and natural. But don't let me tell you what ChatGPT is. Let's just ask ChatGPT. What are you? ChatGPT says, I'm a computer program designed to assist with answering questions and providing information on a wide range of topics. My developers at OpenAI have trained me on a large data set of text from the internet, books, and other sources, including software code, so that I can understand and gener generate human-like responses to user queries. I'm not a real person, but I'm here to help you with questions you may have. Is there anything specific you'd like to know? That's an interesting start. Let's see what happens. Okay, I know nothing about Rust. I've been using the IntelliJ or the, the JetBrains platform for some time. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if there is a JetBrains Rust IDE. And it looks like it just uses IntelliJ. And that's pretty easy. So we'll go ahead and just start with opening up IntelliJ. There we go. Anyways, new project. Let's learn Rust. Uh, no. <laughs> Let's try again. Projects, new project. Okay. All right, new project. Maybe I need to reboot. I don't know. This is already turning out to be, thing. but this is typically what I would go through anyways. But you are just here to join me. So let's try this again. New project. Okay. All right. You tell me, what am I missing? What am I missing? Okay, hold on. Oh, here we go. Boom. I normally just hang out in WebStorm, PHP Storm. What else? I typically just download the IDE. So this really is new to me. All right. So we're going to make the toolchain location. Let's see what. All right. There's obviously something more that I need to do here. So let's just take a step back. We're going to do Mac Rust.
using rust up recommended it looks like you're running mac os okay hold on okay so let's go to chat gpt where can i download rust officially i'm on a mac if that matters rust lang okay cool so we are on the right website all right last thing i want to do is download rust i was a little right, concerned cool. and, and find out that it's just bloated with something else something extra so i feel comfortable running this now let's just open up our terminal and we'll just run this <clears throat> Oh, here we go. Process with the installation. Okay, what else what do we have in here? Okay, okay. So it looks like it's just setting some basic paths. Looking at my profiles. That's be added, variable. Tool chain. Okay, all right. Okay, to get started, you may need to restart your current shell. This will reload your path environments, include cargo's home bin. Okay, to configure, run source. All right. Okay, so that's done. Let's see if we can find that tool chain, tool chain location. All right, where is the Rust tool chain location installed? Toolchain installed. At this point, I'm not sure what a toolchain is, um, but apparently it's just a Rust, the Rust compiled binary. Which Rust C? Beautiful. Okay, okay, all right, let's try this. How can I install, I'm using the IntelliJ IDE. How can I begin working with Rust? So that's pretty cool. One comment about ChatGPT that a lot of people have noticed is that this is a chat session. So it's like having a real-time conversation. And this is probably the first time I've used ChatGPT to teach me how to program something, but I've used other AI platforms in the past to help me with this. The really convenient thing is since we're having a running conversation, anything that I type before, basically anything that I type prior, the, con the context is still there. So yeah, it's great. And we're having a true conversation here. So let's see. So we went ahead, we did the previous things. We figured out where the tool chain is. So we went file, new project. That's where we're at now. In the project SDK field, select the version of Rust that you, let me see project SDK field. I don't see that. Next, oh, okay. In the project SDK field, let's see. Let's see the tool chain location on the new project screen. is asking for the standard library. What does that mean? Okay, let's see what's in here. And we need to select something. The Rust standard library is distributed as part of the Rust toolchain and it is installed along with compiler and the package manager. The version of the standard library that's included with the Rust toolchain is determined by the version of Rust you have installed. When you create a new Rust project in IntelliJ IDE, the standard library field will be pre-populated with the version of Rust standard library that corresponds to your version of Rust. Okay, so let's try this. Let's go ahead and just close IntelliJ real quick and we will open it up again. So that was actually helpful. I think OpenAI and or ChatGPT hit a home run on that project. one. Okay, so this is looking better. See what this does. I can live with that. 
let's learn Rust. Again, uh, I consider myself more of a hacker than, than a programmer. Um, documentation just sucks. I just want to get my hands dirty right away. All right, so I'll just move this over. Let's see how this looks. At this point, my first goal is usually like, how do I run the program? Like, I don't want to type anything. Just, just give me the most basic version and, and just let me figure out how to run it. A lot of the IDEs have a play button up here, uh, and I I don't like I don't like the play button. I want to run from the terminal. Okay, so how do we run Rust from the command line? I guess that would be my next question. We've got a run button right here. Let's see what happens. All right. So IntelliJ ran it. Let's figure out how we can run that in the terminal. How can I run? the Rust Hello World via the command line or terminal. This part was super helpful. I think that um, just for basic Rust syntax and, and kind of operations, ChatGPT right, did a really so good that job. Matches what we have. Nice. Ours is called main.rs. So we just run rust c main.rs. Let's try that. Uh, what wasn't clear here that rust c actually compiles a binary. Couldn't read main. All right. Let's try that again. Oh, look at that. This did work for us. Okay. So we need to have snake case. So maybe it's giving me. A bug. I don't know anything about coding standards. So let's take a look. Let's ask ChatGPT. What is the naming convention for a project? I want my project name to be Let's Learn Rust. Okay, so kebab case. Another option is to use snake case, which means using lower lowercase letters and separating them with an underscore. Since that was the warning that we got, let's give that a shot. Here we go. I'm gonna dump this new project. Let's learn Rust. I should have started with ChatGPT. How do I make a project cool. called Let's Learn Rust? And we'll go ahead and just build it. And uh, it, it built, okay, can't really see it. Let me just drag it over. Clear this. Yay, hello world. We run the source and we tried this one earlier. Rusty main. Eh. Okay, how do I run main.rs in the IntelliJ terminal? I always like to use the terminal. I don't typically use the run button don't know why, but probably because frequently when I'm in the terminal, I can use grep, I can use plenty of other Linux commands. Okay. All right, so this will compile the main RS and create an executable file with the same name as the source. Okay, so let's try this, hold on. I have the toolchain installed. I'm on a Mac. I was trying to get ChatGPT to stop telling me about the toolchain and I'm on a Mac.
main. Oh, maybe it's this one. Okay, I can see that in the target folder. So we have a file that is named Let's Learn Rust. Let's see if we can run that. So I'm running this as I would like a typical Linux or Mac executable. And I was a little surprised there, I was, but super happy. Yay! All right. <laughs> that was cool. Using chat GPT three or using chat GPT, we've, I don't know, we'll call it zero to hero. We went zero to hero in 20 minutes, which is pretty cool. So of course you have to know how to ask the right questions and there's not a better way than just starting with a question. Just ask a question and, and just try to get yourself, just get yourself a little bit farther. Okay, one thing that I have noticed with AI, a lot of people are afraid that AI is gonna take your job. AI is an amazing oracle so far, but you do have to know how to ask the right questions. As we transition to AI in the coming years, I imagine understanding how to talk to AI is going to be very important. Yeah, let's learn. Okay, so what else can we do here? So we basically ran that. Ours was called Let's Learn Rust. Alternative, alternatively, you can use the Rust Package Manager Cargo to build and run the main.rs file. To do this, make sure that the main.rs file is located within a Rust project that was created with Cargo. Then enter the following command in the terminal, cargo run. Okay, so try that, cargo run. Yay! I, all right, I think that was a lot easier. We're basically in the project folder and yeah, that was super easy. So that first command that we were given, where is it? Yeah, it's basically the same thing. We had the full path in there. We got some nice color flags in here. There's our package name. And yeah, just some extras in there. Cargo run looks a lot easier. Cargo run looks pretty easy to me. I like that. Okay, next step. All right, so I think that the first thing that I wanna do, oh, I forgot. Let's take a look at what we're gonna build. All right, check it out. This is what I'm thinking, all right? I wanna build a Rust app that can essentially process a PDF. What it'll do is it will find a QR code on a PDF and it'll read the QR code and then from there, we'll store it. We'll store it in a location. So the idea for me is we will have uh, thousands of documents that have QR codes on them and we just automatically file them. It sounds like a pretty fun app. I could do this in, I would do this in PHP using Laravel, maybe mix in a bit of Python. And no one else would do it like that. Of course, I would that. add a web component to it just because my background is in web. But I thought that this could be a pretty fun project to try to learn in Rust. So that's it. Before we start this though, I think that Maybe just to get my toes wet, let's just see how, I know that there's some aspect of package adherence and package, like being able to consume packages called cargos. And if I'm slaughtering, I, I'm gonna watch this video again in a year and it's gonna be super funny. So I think that we're gonna have to figure out how to bring in some QR code package, but that will be our first app. Before we do this, let's go ahead and see if we can just generate a QR code. So. How can we generate a QR code? Ugh. With the value of ABC123 in Rust. To generate a QR code, with the value of ABC123 in Rust, you can use a library such as QR code, which provides a high level API for generating QR codes. To use the QR code library, you will need to add it as a dependency to your Rust project. To do this, add the following line to your cargo.toml file. Then in your Rust code, you can use the following code to generate the QR code with the value of ABC123. All right, cool. 
This code will generate the QR, the QR code object with a value of ABC123 and then print it to the terminal using the print line macro. Note that the QR code library does not provide a way to render the QR code as an image file. Instead, it prints the QR as ASCII art to the terminal. If you want to generate the QR code as an image file, you'll need to use a different library or a tool that provides this functionality. I'm intrigued. Okay, so a TOML, TOML. file. TOML. I don't know what that is. What is a TOML, TOML file? TOML. How do you pronounce it? A TOML file is a configuration file written in the TOML. So Tom's obvious minimal language format. It's used to specify metadata and dependencies for Rust crates or libraries. And it's named after the extension of the file. Tom L is sim a simple configuration file format that is easy to read and write and is often used in Rust projects to specify dependencies, build settings, and other configuration options. The TOML file is typically located at the root of a Rust crate and is named cargo.toml. To pronounce TOML, you can say .toml or .toml. I'm just going to say TOML. Tom L, T-O-M-L. I'm just assuming. TOML, but T-O-M-L. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment in the chat. Tell me if you think that this is a TOML or a TOML. Okay, so cool. So let's just take a look at this. We'll clear this. And we have our TOML here. Let's take a look at the contents of it. Right now, we got nothing in there. So let's go up here. And we're going to add this crate. And I'm going to do that here. OK, what I'm seeing here is that we have a TOML lock. So if anyone's coming from JavaScript, this should be somewhat familiar, or even from uh, PHP. So of course, with JavaScript, you've got NPM and your package file. With PHP, you have your composer file. So your cargo.toml or your cargo.lock should be similar, because with the package with other package managers, you've got your package file, and then you've got your lock file, which should lock your project to specific dependencies, et cetera. All right, so where do I stick this thing? So to generate the QR code, use the QR code library, and you'll need to add it as a dependency. All right, so we'll stick it right there. Save, okay? And let's go ahead and do this. So back here the top and it looks like it's not pulling that in oh it probably needs to install it how can I install a crate or a crate via the command line to my project cargo install crate name Okay, so let's see if I can just do cargo install. It sounds intuitive. Nope. It's no longer supported. Use cargo install path. Cargo install path and just say my current path. All right, error failed to compile. Intermediate artifacts can be found. Oh, one thing is chat GPT-3 or chat GPT could be bold. All right, so we'll tr we'll just try installing it from the terminal here instead. Cargo install QR code. Yay! And hold on, but I'm expecting it to be as a dependency. my lock file. What do we miss? Cargo install version. To use the crate in your Rust code, you'll need to add an extern crate directive at the top. All right, okay. Let's Google cargo install QR code. I felt uh, like this is kind of where some of the chat GPT advice was, was getting conflicted. 
so we're at this version versus 0 0.19, 0 0.12. Oh, QR code Rust. All right, that's a different one. Where can I find more information about the QR code crate? So at this point, I really wanted to use the, the package that was recommended by, um, by ChatGPT. Okay, it looks like it's the same crate, just for whatever reason, ChatGPT is just making up versions. Cargo run. I thought the warnings and the messages from the Rust compiler were actually pretty cool. Okay, let the code, let's see, let code help. If this is intentional, so unused variable, that's cool. So if we plan on not using it, we can put an underscore on that. That's pretty cool. Okay. So we saw another issue here. QR code cannot be formatted with the default formatter. All right, so what do I do? I'll just remove that. Format argument must be a string literal. Okay. QR code cannot be formatted with the default formatter. And this actually had to do with like some of the typings. Right. What does QR code cannot be formatted by the default formatter mean? It's an error message that you might see while trying to run to print a QR code object in Rust using the print line macro or the format function. This error occurs when the QR code type does not implement the standard format display trait, which is required to print the object using print line. All right, I think at this point, chat GPT-3 has given us a huge head start, but I think it's time to see what we have over here. That's pretty interesting. I was really looking forward to seeing a QR code that was text only via the print line. So let me see, Rust QR code text only, QR code text generator. All right, regardless, that was icing on the cake. Let's see what the documentation says. This is the first time I've even looked at any docs. So at this point, it looks like we, we can know what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and just grab this. Grab all of this actually. Here I was kind of afraid that I was gonna show my noviceness um, because I really don't know like syntax and, and yeah. Um, ultimately what I found out is that chat GPT was giving me source code for a different QR code library. And so it was, it was mixing its recommendations. Um, ultimately the library that it was giving me details for, uh, had some similar naming, um, but it was two different libraries. Um, this, this portion of the project, uh, I, I was stuck on the QR uh, side much longer than, than I, I think I should have been. I switched over to SVG mode. Um, it, me thinking that it's just something I, I just, I'm not really sure, but uh, I know that SVGs are processed differently than images. An, an SVG is a XML document um, or an X, it's got an XML structure. Um, so it, it's very easy to create an SVG. It's just, it's just a, like a text-based image. And width and height, code.dimensions, code, QR code. All right, just try it. So, so this is kind of like, this is part one. Okay. So it, it's, it's giving me like some dimensions that I should be using and ultimately uh, it, the method just isn't there. It's just really weird because it, it just it felt natural and it felt like it should be there. So we're giving it a an integer of a positive value. Can I just change this to I32? Honestly, I forgot what a tuple was. <laughs> Chat GPT was super helpful yeah, with, with uh, helping me figure that out. Expected to fix the code that generates a QR code in Rust, you can change the type of the tuple to match the type of the array like this. All right. In this code, the type of the tuple is changed from I32 to I32 I32. All right. 
So we do that, i32. What is the difference between a tuple and an array? In the Rust programming language, a tuple is an ordered collection of values, while an array is a fixed size collection of values of the same type. Here are some differences between tuples and arrays in Rust. Types. A tuple can contain values of different types, while an array must contain values of the same type. For example, you can create a tuple with the types i32, float32, string, but you cannot create an array with these types. All right, okay, so maybe that means I just have to change this to a tuple. Oh, snaps! We got a little farther. And so this is basically where I, where I found out that uh, I was using the, the wrong library the whole time and it just made complete sense. Um, so yeah, no, no problem is without its obstacles of the QR code struct. Git module takes two arguments, an X and a Y coordinate. All right, so what's wrong with my QR code? Like my QR code, Perhaps maybe it does have to do with a version. I don't think that this, here's an example how you can use git module, git module. Rust QR code, git module. I start to realize that chat GPT has been lying to me. With QR code gen. Okay, so probably what's happening here is it's mixing libraries, which make a lot of sense, right? There we go. QR code gen, QR code gen, QR code gen. Google, you are still needed. How can I use the crate to generate a key, a, an SVG QR code? All right, so we'll try that. Okay. I want to see if the git module works now. And let's just see what happens. We got nothing to lose at this point. Cannot find ECC or EC in QR code gen. QR code gen. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the docs. And we're looking at encode text. Okay, encode text, QR code ECC, an enumerated field, low, medium, quartile, high, low, okay, okay. So here's the spot Maybe where here? I think it's pretty clear to see that it, it's mixing things up. Um, the, or, or it's just not complete. So uh, okay. ChatGPT told me just ECC. Oh this, this yeah. This was just a bit more verbose. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see what we got. Oh man, that looks nice. So let's go ahead and let's scan this thing. Read QR code from URL online, okay? A, B, C, one, two, three. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right, admittedly, that took some effort. It wasn't too bad. Definitely wasn't as easy as I thought. But at the same time, it was easy. I'm comparing this, I've done this one other time. The other programming language that I learned and I taught myself in a weekend was Golang. Golang has been around for about 10 years-ish. There's just so much more context that is available to AI. I think the drawbacks or what I found with using AI to, all right, hold on. We've got to map this out. I got to think about this for a minute. 
Where AI was exceptional is AI helped me get started quickly, and it also helped me set up my IDE quickly. I had I stumbled a few times, but I think that it did a pretty good job. I did try to go off on my own in the beginning and just diverge from asking ChatGPT how to set up my IDE, but ultimately ChatGPT was super, super helpful in helping me configure my IDE. So I definitely can appreciate that. I feel like I got to the hello world moment using zero resources. I didn't look at anything online. <laughs> I, I didn't watch any videos. All I did was use ChatGPT and a little bit of Googling where needed. And I feel like to get to the hello world aspect was super easy, super quick. I also feel like ChatGPT really helped me understand some syntax. It helped me color in the lines quite a bit. I don't have a lot of experience with tuples myself because I come from some languages that are much more loosely typed. For example, JavaScript, PHP, perhaps Python. But regardless, generally I work with JSON objects or arrays and, and I don't have to specify the size or the length. I feel like I feel like I was able to I feel like I was able to overcome some of the more like technical constraints using ChatGPT. I think that ChatGPT did a pretty good job at giving me enough to get started. Where I think ChatGPT didn't perform as good as it as I expected is ChatGPT definitely confused a few of the different packages. For example, it would tell me to install the QR code package and the version that it gave me was different than the version that was available on the Rust website. So understanding that ChatGPT itself is only working with a couple years worth of information for Rust, I, I don't know, honestly, I don't know how long Rust has been around, but I don't think that it's as mature as a language. It's only become exciting over the last couple of years. So definitely the amount of inf information that ChatGPT has is pales in comparison to any other programming language <laughs> just about. <laughs> So ChatGPT was fibbing to me quite a bit and, uh, and it was hard to realize that because what it was telling me with the code looked like it should be correct and it was very convincing in how it was telling me what to use. And then with my IDE wasn't really telling me that I was wrong immediately. I don't think that I realized that perhaps ChatGPT was mixing different libraries. So for example, telling, or telling me to use the QR code library, but then actually using the QR code gen library and basically mixing some of the syntax and functions and methods. So I was getting like a Frankenstein version of code suggestions. And, but understanding that, I, I think that the, it, as I continue with this project, I'll have an opportunity to, to query differently because like I said in the beginning, you do have to know how to talk to AI. And an AI will lie to you and AI will do it very convincingly. I can't say that I'm disappointed. I think that, that for an introduction beyond Hello World to Rust, for me, was terrific. I, my, my training wheels are still on, but I'm not dissatisfied. The best way to, to explain this to someone else would be, it's, it's like having a programmer buddy that you could ask questions to. In my experience so far, if you're asking questions about Java, Python, JavaScript, PHP, you've got a really good buddy. It looks like with Rust, there's still a bit of work to go, but I think that where it's gonna help me excel with Rust is it's gonna help me understand the language better. It's gonna help me understand the typecasting and the typing system a lot better. And, and I'm looking forward to it. I really think it was cool. It took a little bit longer than I thought, but, but that's it. So thank you for joining me with this. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, take care. Tommel. Tommel.